asking you the simple question of how much do you need to start a business? Hmm. Any? I'm not, sure, I'm not sure I've thought about it, but it depends on the kind of business you want to get into. So uh, some may be capital intensive, some you may not need much. We've mm. heard some motivational speakers and even people who own businesses say that, oh, I started with 10 Ghana cities and today I have 1 billion Ghana cities. One so, cup of rice. Yeah, you get one, like, one grain of rice. One grain, not one One cup. grain. Now I have like, like a whole rice farm. Yeah, ma. Yeah. Yeah, man. So it depends on what you want to start doing. And of course, when our experts also join us, we we'll ask them if um, you, you have to be specific when it comes to the amount of money or you can start small and then grow your business. I think people also have the idea of what they want to do, but they've not really sat down to plan and know how much yeah. exactly they need. Yeah. So you catch a business person or someone who has an idea and tell the, and ask the person, how much do you need to start your business? Oh, oh, wait. Um, oh, uh, you know, you have to know exactly how much you need to yeah. start a business. So that's yeah. the question we're asking you this afternoon of course our quote of the day to inspire you as well anita what do we have our quote of the day is once you replace negative thoughts with positive ones you start having positive results and we couldn't have had um a better coach of the day like this one um such a you know a, a person who is big on positivity even when it looks all gloomy i think there's always a positive side of every situation and so once you replace those negative thoughts with positive ones you start having positive results and this quote is by Willie Nelson Willie Nelson and that is our quote of the day we're getting into bus trends yes absolutely like Anita and I said has been a lot happening over the weekend uh, we uh, I'm not sure if this is good news or not good news hmm. but over the weekend we heard about the incident uh, with funny face yep. and his accident. Um, let's let's tell you what's happening. So Ghanaian comedian DKB has clarified that none of the victims involved in Sunday night's crash by comedian funny face is dead. So DKB in a post on his ex page providing updates on the matter a few hours after the incident occurred, said he rushed to the scene after hearing about the sad incident to support his colleague actor. According to him, the police handled the situation professionally to prevent any attacks on the actor. I'm certain that when I join Willa comes, yeah. we'll have more updates yeah. on this particular one. I've had varying stories, mm -hmm. you know, people saying that um, the one of the women or the woman the woman involved mm -hmm. uh, who was knocked down yeah. uh, with the kids ha is actually funny faces grandmother. I'm sure like, I'm sure we'll keep hearing a lot of stories, nah, but um, Okay. <laughs> I doubt, I doubt, yeah. I doubt, I So doubt. I'm like, okay, what's happening? Yeah, so I'm sure Joe will tell us more. Yeah, we'll get more details. And we're also waiting for the police to give us an official um, report uh, regarding the entire incident. For now, it's just um, eyewitness reports mm. that we are um, going with or we're hearing. And so we want to also get into the full details of this issue. So from... Um, well, on your screens are some visuals captured by eyewitnesses. And also, we have to commend the police for swiftly response. Yeah. Yeah, responding and coming to the scene. Because I, I, I heard some people, even DKB mentioned that they wanted to sort of attack him. And it could have gotten uh, more serious. And also, we're hearing that they, the, the people involved in the accident... Um, are alive uh, yeah. and so we want proper confirmation these are all um, hearsays and so we want to hear from the police and the right authorities regarding this and of course entertainment will also bring us more details on this very sad yeah but incident. the good thing I like about this is that DKB also has rallied uh, support from yeah. his fellow colleagues um, in the com comedy world yeah to support funny face so that's a good thing we see the unity happening this is very good. We're well, hoping that they all come together. We but so. <laughs> away from that, Bongo Ideas <laughs> uh, speaks in a shocking twist of events. And Ghanaian blogger Bongo Ideas has revealed the ordeal he experienced when he was arrested by some men who masqueraded as police officers. And Albert Nathide, his real name, was reported to have been picked up by some men uh, in the dawn of March 14, around 3 a.m. And the report alleged that the blogger was picked up by some police officers and personnel from the national security. However, the Ghana police and the national security both dismissed the report, stating that neither of them arrested the blogger. Hmm. I'm speaking for the first time. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. I've been trying to wrap my, my head around, around it. it. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. And he spoke on DW. I was I was really shocked. Agenda master. I was like, yeah. I mean, I haven't heard him speak on any of the local uh, platforms yet. So DW, I was like, okay, then this must be serious. But I listened to him, and I'm trying to put two and two together. I'm not sure how I feel about it. So if it's not the police, then who threatened his life? Because he said he pointed a gun at him. This issue... I'm, I'm really waiting for the entire thing to unfold before I have a comment on it because um, till date, we really haven't gotten the full details. Mm -hmm. Which people, um, whether it's a kidnap or they arrested him, he, he says that they tortured him to an extent and we still haven't gotten the full details. So because he spoke out of the president. I was like, okay. You get it. Um, I, I do not know why he also hasn't been, I do not know if he's been called, but I'm thinking that um, he should be invited by the, the, the police, police. so he's so. interrogated. And whoever did that to him, based on whatever reason they decided to do that, then we, we get to the uh, full length of the issue. Because for now, it's just what he is saying. We do not know the real truth of the matter. Absolutely. And it shouldn't be swept under the carpet. It shouldn't be swept under the carpet. It shouldn't at be. At all. I'm not sure if that's a Chelsea boots or um, <laughs> what, a cowboy shoes? What do you call it? Very, very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Black Cherry, he has a style of his own and it's his legs for me, you, you know. You just have to love him. Yeah. Long legs. Kukuru kuru. The kuda. Yes, sir. <laughs> Anyways, we're taking a quick break. When we return, we're discussing personal branding and social networking. It's time to get into that personal branding conversation and how to social network. I know I'm number one. I need this social networking class hmm. very, very much. And joining us this uh, afternoon to have the conversation, our very own, the ever beautiful, uh, the smart. Mm, the stylish. Happy birthday in advance. Yeah. Happy birthday in advance, <laughs> Miss Nancy. Woo! Of course, you know Miss Nancy, she's our style coach. Yeah. And then we also have Joey Daku, who is a brand consultant as well. Gentlemen and lady, welcome. Thanks mm. for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Miss Nancy looking bright and very, you know, know, the outfits, the colors, Absolutely. the details. <laughs> and Joey, I mean, We're you trying. two looks like. Uh, yeah. yeah was, There's similarity. Yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah, colors. Yeah. Yeah. Looking good, looking good. Well, welcome. How's the afternoon going for you two? Very well. I heard it's your birthday soon. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Actually. Oh, mine yeah. is on Saturday. Wow. We're in sync. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Hard ones rock. We're here. We're definitely yeah. say happy birthday to you yeah. guys before we, we end the show. But let's get into the conversation. They say ladies yeah. first. I want to be biased. But you know what? <laughs> Let me start with Miss Nancy Steele. Um, first of all. Uh, we've seen people as a style coach. I'm sure you've met a lot of people, mm -hmm. and I know you know Miss Nancy. She yeah. will give it to you. She will, you know, <laughs> critique you. So, um, how does a person first of all discover their personal brand or style? Okay, so personal branding and styling go hand in hand. Mm. That is what style coaching is about. You are not just dressing; you are dressing to communicate who you are and who you want to be to the world. So whatever it is you're putting on is telling a story about probably where you're coming from, where you are now, and how you want the world to accept and see you. So it's not just about clothing that are well-fitting. It's not just about the quality of your clothing. It's also telling your story. And so if you are at a certain age and a certain status, some clothing, some fashion, some styles are not appropriate for you because you want to project a certain image. Mm. <laughs> this is where my mind begins to, you know, counter uh, certain things. But I guess the first question should be what personal branding really is. Yeah. Um, Joey, if you can help us with that. Yeah, so um, basically how I can... Make it, make, make it make sense to someone who doesn't even want to go into the details or technicalities of personal styling or personal branding is. Um, just like Miss Nancy said, where you want to go, okay? So everybody wants to have like a certain persona, okay? If you want to be now, like a lot of people have a transition when it comes to, you know, in their daily work, in their personal life and all of that. But personal branding is actually p putting up that persona so that people will perceive you. So it's in more of in the third person, mm. not even to yourself, because it's what you put on on the outside that reflects or tells people what's in the, on the inside. Okay. So personal branding is more or less being that flyer, that billboard for people to read where you are now or where you're going. Basically. Okay. 
And for you, Miss Nancy, mm -hmm. in terms of styling, how would you describe personal branding? From okay. your point of view. Very, very, very important because with your choice of clothing, you introduce yourself wherever you go without having to say where you're coming from and where you are going. And so you cannot have a certain characteristic. In personal branding, we put together your temperament, mm. your chosen profession and your personal style. What to create that means? okay yeah. your nature okay yeah. your nature your given profession and so that is why you will see anita everything about anita on television has a wow factor television is not ordinary she is in the celebrity stardom status and that is how she's supposed to look a regular person going to the bank a regular person going to the other office doesn't need to have so much makeup on doesn't need to have that kind of wow factor in fact if you were going to a corporate office and even thus can take Anna where I wouldn't advise the golden path but because she's a star and she's on television there should be something wow about her kente skirt mm -hmm. and that is why you see that we would have such details yeah. in my regular Ankara yeah. mixed with I mean pleats over a blazer we do not dress regularly quote and unquote because of what we do and that is why if you ever met a doctor probably in a certain hospital in Ghana not anywhere else right here in Ghana and this gentleman comes in with his jeans dropping, with the chains at the back, with his T-shirt at one type, I mean, torn all over with his cap, yeah. walking in a certain manner, and he gets and says, hey, yo, how are you? I'm your doctor, and I'm going to uh. take care of you. Would you <laughs> sit there or not? Because this image I express isn't exactly of a person that has the ability to take care of people mm. in our part of the world. Mm -hmm. Elsewhere, it can pass. So when we say that you, you are personally branding yourself, you are considering your career, considering your temperament, and projecting yourself in a stylish manner that tells people how to accept you. Yeah. Interesting. Hmm. So it goes beyond, like you said, it goes beyond just looks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it's just a part of the of bigger it. conversation. The temperament part is what, what, what got my attention. No yeah. wonder you find um, criminals wearing suits. Oh, yes. Right? Oh, Back yes. in the days, you expect a criminal to be the one dressing with the chains now, and whatever. Now, a person that is out there that is doing things that are not too cool would want to project a very too Good cool image. personality yeah. for you to accept them as a businessman and not be thinking otherwise. That is what image clothing can do for a person. A criminal can wear the appropriate clothing and look like he deserves to be in the Flagstaff house. Mm -hmm. Hmm. With on. just his choice of clothing. Miss Nancy, you, 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 you really made a point that is very, very, very important. So then which means that we can read people wrongly then even when it comes to styling. Indeed. Yes. Perception. So who you are is who you have to project. You cannot tell me that you are a godly girl, uh, you are a decent homebred girl, and then you walk about in very skimpy clothing, have all the piercings from left to right, have all, I mean, not just one anklet. There are some things that when you put on yourself, it tells otherwise about who you want the world to accept you to be. So first of all, who are you? Who do you want the world to know you are? Work with that. Whenever you're putting together your, your look. So I am a typical classic lady. I love to appear like a lady all the time. And then there is a part of me that is quite romantic, which loves to, you know, project that sensuality about me. So anytime I put myself together, there is always something about my look that is alluring. Mm. So you would see a little skin somewhere. I mean, uh, we try because we're mature women and we're knowledgeable. We cannot look trashy. But there is always something quite romantic about me. And so when you see me at a glance, you say, Oh, she's a lady, but she's a sexy one. Mm. And I am. <laughs> Miss Nancy, she, she indeed is. But let me, let Joey, me come yeah. to you, Joey. Yeah. Let's, let's also look at the men. Mm -hmm. When a man comes to you and uh, conversations about styling, branding himself, all come to play, where do you start from? Well, for a man, it's a bit different. You know, every man ideally wants to perceive himself or position himself as an alpha, okay? And with that comes a few things that you can use to determine who is an alpha and who is not. Basically, in this sentence, an alpha would be one who has people following and not a follower. Yeah. Okay? okay. So, in a sense, if a man is well-groomed, I first perfume, how do you smell? 
Hmm. Um, second, things that are a bit subtle like your slippers or your shoes, um, your watch, your belt. Um, these are things that the regular guy doesn't really pay attention to. A regular guy can wear a belt for five, six, seven years. Um, same leather belt, the leather is wearing out, but will never change it. Yeah. Um, but the alpha male will pay attention to every single detail. And these details are like how clean is your watch? Um, you know, the back of your watch, not the front. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, Very so these important. Are, yeah, 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 these are simple, little, little quirky things that people actually use. I've worked retail myself. Okay. Sometimes when I see a man or gentleman walk into the store, I know how much they are probably going to sell. They're going to buy, buy. Mm -hmm. for instance. Um, and that is because of these few things. They can be wearing just a simple um, outfit, shorts, a t-shirt, and a slipper, and you know that the person is going to spend the whole bank um, in your store. But, you know, someone could be wearing a suit, three-piece, and all of that, and you know that they're not going to spend jack. Because, How are you able to tell that? Yeah, because quality. of the little things. Little okay. things. The little things, the quality, uh, the way their nails are groomed. You know, yeah. if we say in our local daily little pen, you know, and that, like that is, dandy. yeah, <laughs> you know, and that is more like into my people. Ashanti's like that a lot, you know. Um, yeah, I'm Ashanti, so I can speak for us. <laughs> yeah. We like that a lot. We like to, you know, pay attention to certain things and all. And it's not like the flashy, it's not yeah. about the flashy, flashy things, but the little quirky things make a difference for me. A friend of Settings. Yeah. Settings. <laughs> so, so, from what I'm deducing, uh, we're t I realized that. Personal branding is all about perception. Perception, yeah. exactly. What you want people to perceive of you. Yeah. But which is more important? What people perceive of you mm -hmm. or what you perceive of yourself yeah. mm -hmm. is so your brand. For you to build an authentic personal brand, mm -hmm. these things should be consistent. Mm -hmm. yeah. Who you are and who you sell to the world. Mm -hmm. Because if you are not consistent, there are times that you will give yourself away. Mm -hmm. Then people will question Absolutely. who you are. Mm -hmm. Because all of these efforts you're putting into your look is to get people to think a certain mm -hmm. way of you. Mm -hmm. So if you lose God, mm -hmm. if it's not consistent, if it's not who you really are, you just acting gentlemanly. Yeah. Yeah. You will get to a place where you let go of that mm. facade and yeah. then become yourself yeah. and everybody would know. He was speaking about um, you looking at people and knowing their value. At a point in time, after 30 years, it's quality, not quantity. Yeah. Yeah. You don't buy everything that is available on the market because fashion happens every six months. But you look for things that are good, that are authentic, mm -hmm. and then you buy them. When I see a gentleman, I look at his shoes. I look at his belt. Quality, as he said. His wristwatch. Men are not supposed to be wearing jewelry all about. But your wristwatch should be of some quality and should cost one arm and probably a leg. <laughs> so one arm and a leg. I see. Wait, so you see why a lot of people then think that personal styling and branding is expensive? No. You, you see, it's where you are. Anita, at every point in time, this is not information for the student. This is information for the big man mm -hmm. that has his own company that is coming about. Exactly. Okay, so I'll give you a typical <laughs> example. When you see gentlemen wearing designer clothing, mm -hmm. especially graphics with the names of the brands written in them, mm -hmm. it speaks, I'm trying so hard to be rich and I need you to think that I'm doing rich already. Yeah. So please believe me when I'm telling you that I'm rich. When a man becomes rich, gets to that status in life, they now go for quality. Yeah. So he's wearing a T-shirt that costs probably 2,000 Ghana cities, even $1,000, but nobody knows. Hmm. And he does not mind nobody knowing. Yeah. But like he said, at a glance, you see that mm, this is T-shirt, but look at the cotton. Yeah. Look at the quality. Yeah. Yeah. Look at how it's clinging onto the skin. Then you know. You smell the person and you smell money. You look at the person and you literally see that from, from shoes to belt and probably wristwatch, which is what a man should really pay attention yeah. to. And therefore, even us, the women, even though we love a lot of clothing, let's come in. The next time you see me, I'll be wearing a body contrast with his uh, green blazer on yeah. it with my green shoes. Yeah. Another time with an inner with my pair of jeans. It's the same blazer mm -hmm. of good quality. I can wear it over and over, <laughs> over again. again. Yeah. It's not always about the money. Okay, okay. <laughs> let's, let, let, let's also look at the body Types. shapes and body types yeah, yeah. because that is a problem for a lot of people because they tend mm. to find difficulty in, okay, what is my body type? What is my body shape? For the men, I know there's pyramid, there's triangle, Mesomorph. there's square, there's yeah, this, there's that. And you, you, you yeah. they, they end up, um, how do you call it, confusing it. Yeah. Right. Like what so we have on have the screen, for instance, there's a 
round one, which is yeah. what? Is, is that Endo the one part? That's, yeah. that's the man that's I call the, 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 um, the teddy bear. <laughs> bear, bear. <laughs> yeah. The round one is usually a man with a protruded belly. Mm. So, like I told you, handsomeness comes in different shapes and sizes. Mm. As you can see, all the gentlemen lined up, they have their different shapes. Yeah. They are all not the same. So, what would go for the square man would never go for the round man mm. because you are dealing with excess fat. Mm. in front of his stomach. Mm -hmm. So what you don't do to this man is to add on more volume. Mm -hmm. Volume is adding on clothing. Yeah. So even the suit for the round man should be lighter. So right. this tile that my gentleman has here is definitely not for the round man because wow. he's got too much going on. Yeah. This man is big already. Mm. If you add this to him, you're going to make him three times the size. Exactly. But for a slender tall man who needs a little bit of volume to look good, if he adds on, he layers his clothing, he's getting that mm. volume. Absolutely. Oh, so I this man so. sitting here, what's his, what, Joey, I mean, what's his <laughs> body shape and Miss Nancy from a styling point, um, let, let, let's, I mean, you, want, you want me to analyze this? Yes. Yes. I, I, I like that. You luckily, <laughs> luckily, I want to believe that your shoulders are wider than your waist. Yes, yes. Because I've not seen your body. Uh, yeah. 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 So your, your shoulders are wider than your mm -hmm. waist. So we're going to get the what? Yeah. The, the, Triangle, triangle, yeah, inverted, inverted, triangle. The inverted triangle, the triangle that is looking down, yeah. which means that the lower part is smaller. Yeah. And ideally, for every man, you want to see broad chest. For women, we want to see the hourglass shape. That is, we are big here, sinked at the waist side, and big down there. Mm -hmm. If you get the measurements around your bust and your hips at same, with the waist side being probably half. Of that, then you are a wow our glass shape. Okay. So for the women, we have uh, that one. Okay. So what I see, uh, they call it so many apple pear, different, oh, different, different strawberry. opinions. Yes. But uh, uh, okay. Yes. So that is. is it. We have the uh, that is the ideal shape for all women. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants. So if you don't even have it, you dress to create that illusion. That, yeah. mm. For the women, if you don't have the hourglass shape, you dress to create that illusion. So, for instance, a woman who rather is the inverted triangle, okay, which means that her lower part is, lower is smaller part. and her upper part is big, you need volume at your lower part whenever you dress up. Mm. So you are doing these pleats, you are doing the goddess, you are doing the flares, you are doing the skaters, everything to give Why you do volume. Nancy? Then it means that you're trying to look like the hourglass, right? And that yes. is not your actual body shape. We give an illusion. That is what makes you perfect. So styling is about giving balances yeah. and perfecting the imperfections. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm. So that's just what okay. we do. So Anita is here. Anita has got a great hourglass shape. Mm. And so every day she's wearing clothing that is sticking all around. <laughs> there are days that she would wear a dress, a blouse that I think is slightly bigger. I'm saying, like, anyway, hey, show them the body <laughs> because we've got it. So what you don't have, you don't project. Yeah. There are women who are equally big at the midsection. You've got protruding belly. You've got folds at your side. Please, when the girls are wearing the body con things, me, because of my folds, I don't go there often. Unless I know I have something with which I'm going to straighten it, yeah. or I've got something to put at the back. Yeah. Like I'm going to wear a bed con dress, I'm going to slide a blazer on it. So all you see is the front where everything is almost perfect, mm -hmm, and then you don't see the part. Yeah. So we dress to cover our imperfections okay. and project our perfections. perfections. Okay. Beautiful. Joey, mm -hmm. I hear in this case, uh, colors also help. Colors right. absolutely help. Um, darker tones, um, lighter tones for... Like a dark skinned guy like me, mm -hmm. now I'm on beige. Beige works absolutely great for mm. dark skin tones. It helps bring us um, our, our complexion out. Um, I used to love burnt orange as well. So for me, even though I don't love, so I, I, when I enter a room, I don't want to be seen redly, right? Um, which is another thing. But when I enter a room, I just want to be noticed when you come close to me, you see what I'm wearing, you love it, but I don't want to be screaming, because, Joey's yeah. here. Mm. So I go rather for dark tones of brighter colors. Mm. So I'll do a burgundy instead of a red. Mm. I'll do a mustard instead of a yellow. Mm. You get it. Mm. So I like that more. In terms of, you know, what um, 
Miss Nancy was saying about even the colors complementing your size and mm. all of that. We all know that black gives the illusion of small, yeah. mm. um, and then white also exposes you as well. Um, even lines as well. If you have like vertical lines going in, you can look taller. If you have horizontal, it makes you look bigger. So these all play a part in choosing what exactly no miss yeah. nancy is waiting to I, wait I on know, this right? yeah. <laughs> yeah. she's been on me Ooh, uh, when it comes to colors i love dark colors oh, i mean i'm dark right. but i love dark colors let's settle those arguments <laughs> so is, is, it, is it true that for dark guys yes. lighter colors looks better on them and for for fur guys or light skin guys darker colors look da better absolutely yes. mm. absolutely i've tried to run away from that personally because i don't love loud colors but mm -hmm. then the darker tones of loud colors will work perfectly for you. Oh. Perfectly. So he, he found that yeah. truly for dark skinned people is bright colors that works. Yeah. But his personality does not call for so much attention. Yeah. I think it's because he's very tall and uh, uh, very handsome. Uh, uh, thank you. His, his, his <laughs> physique gives him mm. presence already yeah. and he doesn't need more. Yeah. And so he's one of the persons that you would meet and you will process. You look at him, you may look away, and look at him again and go, hmm, and then ah, and then you walk to him. Yeah. So he's not the type that at a glance you see him coming. I'm petite in stature. I am a small woman. <laughs> I need my attention. So I would wear anything bright and yeah. loud that would give me what I need to enhance the image mm. that I am trying to project. So you see what we have. So that means that when someone is petite or short, they have to do quite a lot for people to notice them? De depending Emotion. on the person's character, yeah. okay. the image, the brand. Exactly. I I'm a media person. Mm. I'm petite. I am lovely and bubbly, but I also need that attention. I don't want to use my nature to call for the attention. I don't want to be all over the place talking to people I do not know, having bloggers around me, mm. uh, having a PA, uh, whatever, <laughs> whatever. People work with about four people as an entourage. Yeah. It's something that doesn't work for me. So I would come, as simple as I am, mm -hmm. but you will notice me. And I'll use my chosen uh, colors, the appropriate ones that's good for my skin to call for that attention. Absolutely. So Joey going for the darker tones of bright, bright colors, colors is perfect. Mm. Yeah. So you can imitate that because you're almost the same skin tone. <laughs> I love tone. it. I actually like darker tones yeah. of bright colors. Yes. Yeah. So if, if you do, then we are not going to be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank God. Well, I love my black. I love my black. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. So does it mean that, I mean, once you're dark, you don't have to wear dark colors? You, no, no. no, no that's not really. Who, st who not still really. love extremely dark colors? Because I love, yeah, I love yeah, black. No, myself, I love my blacks. Like black, um, black. Yeah. I love black. I love black and I love white. And I get more compliments when I wear white okay. than black. True. You know, even though black serves like every time you are, again, it depends on the setting that you're in. Mm -hmm. So let's say there's a runway and backstage, it's not about you or anything. Yeah. So you can just blend mm, in, black, you yeah. know, that kind of thing. So your black is a staple that you'd need yeah. as a gentleman. But then, Definitely throwing more colors. Okay, away. well, <laughs> that's what God wants you to do. He has you to. have no choice. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. For exactly. your chosen profession, so we <laughs> style you to look like that star, that icon. We style you so that the one that doesn't know you would see you and ask who you are. Yeah. By the time you leave the place, people have known. Who you are. I think it's personality, <laughs> and I agree with the personality, but I think it's the personality too. Yeah. I'm not someone who likes to show myself. I like to always be in the back mm -hmm. because I think I have presence. So yeah. I don't like to be in yeah. front of people. I like to yeah. be at the back. So mm -hmm. I like the darker colors where you're not seeing me. I'm observing people. Mm -hmm. But you're right. When you're on TV, you definitely have to be that. Let's get into the social networking conversation. Yeah. Okay. And I like that Ms. Nancy, Ms. Nancy raised um, the, 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 the topic of character as part of personal branding. Yeah. I learned that personal branding is also what people say about you when you are not mm -hmm. in the room. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, we've, we've spoken a lot about style and how you dress, how you look, how you smell. That's for character, mm -hmm. because now we're getting into social networking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The way you talk to people, how important mm -hmm. is it to your personal brand? Mm. You want to go first or should I? Uh, Joey, okay. Joey takes it. <laughs> okay, so um, for instance, uh, in the fashion space, um, I've been doing these uh, trainings um, on you know the fashion business and all of that and when you sometimes conduct these um, seminars mm. and all people come out you know get seated and the room is the setting is everybody is trying to look up to you to teach them or show them the way so in that case I become like uh, 
an authority in mm -hmm. the room. But then I walk into the room and the first thing that I do is go to every table and shake the hands of everybody in there and say, hi, my name is Joey, what's your name? Even though they've seen me on my flyers, even though they've seen me, you know, broadcast what I'm going to do, but I shake everybody. That single act alone gets people to connect to you right then. Mm. You have them sold. Okay, so it's the little things that people, you know, when like Anita, you people see you, people know you, people love you. The moment they get to meet you, that very five seconds will determine if they would still follow you or unfollow you. <laughs> you know, just so five seconds. Yeah, just five seconds. What is and an introvert. Yeah. No, no, it could be that, but you know, sometimes we sell. You know, something has to give. You mm. don't. You could be an introvert and all of that, but. How you make people feel, I, I understand, has been, like my mantra is we are saved to serve. Whatever it is that I know, I'm, I'm supposed to serve people with it. Do you get it? So once we are there, once I walk into the room, I need to make sure that everybody is okay. I don't mind going to look for water for Miss Nancy, no matter what, even if I am older or younger, like I have to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, so these things, these little things for me is what sets the ball rolling with your personal brand. Even if you're big, you're the MD, whoever you are, your ability to come down and wash the feet of anybody who is even below you is the very first thing to getting through to their heart. Mm, that's, that's some profound yeah. statement. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it is important uh, how you make people feel. Mm. So your brand couldn't have been marketed any better than how I felt when I interacted Absolutely. with you, when I saw you. With our kind of professions, it's the people that makes us. We are not selling mm -hmm. food. We are not selling clothing. Yeah. We are selling our personalities to be loved. And when the people meet you in person, on television, they create an image about you. Mm -hmm. But when they meet you in person, the expectation, the experience is yeah. what they are living with. And that is what, you see, it takes 30 seconds to create an impression. Yeah. First impression on someone. At a glance, a person is able to say that, ah, She's sweet. Yeah. She's warm. Yeah. She feels too much of herself. She's into herself. He is into him. I don't want to come close to this person. Mm -hmm. You don't even need to speak because 55% uh, of our communication is nonverbal. So before you start talking, mm -hmm. your body, your face, your That's eyes has already told them yeah. that I am here. I am honoring you with my presence. I love that you love me and I'm loving you back. Or you are telling them that, listen, I'm the only human being here and I cannot be bothered about who you are or anyone <laughs> else. Yeah. So it's very important that just to make people understand you and accept you, greet. When you meet people, lift your head, say hello. Say good morning, how are you? And pass on. If the person wants to engage you and you're in a hurry, say, oh, I'm so sorry, I need to go. Let's do this another time. And give the person a smile. Mm. You didn't give the person your attention nor your time, but you leave them feeling great. Yeah. Mm. And there is another way that you will leave them feeling sorry for having, I mean, approached you, even though they were revering you. You have no idea how people think about you. Mm -hmm. If you knew, you would have to lift that expectation. So you greet people and you use the golden expression, uh, expressions. Excuse me, thank you, I'm sorry in your social gatherings. Yeah. Introduce yourself. Don't think I am Miss Nancy <laughs> because I am on television, mm. confessions every mm. Saturday night. I speak on style and I'm at every, almost every conference for women. Everybody knows me. You see, there is something called delayed gratification and the stated <sighs> elegance. Mm. So you don't carry the energy of, I know who I am. Yeah. You go like, hi, my name is Miss Nancy. I work with TV3. Then the person says, ah, oh, Miss Nancy, who doesn't know you? <laughs> that is more better yeah. Yeah. than for me to, yes, I'm looking for, <laughs> who are you? Don't you know me? Yeah, right. Oh. <laughs> right. So, but it's um, all <laughs> got to do with attitude. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, for, See, for our yeah. field, yeah. sometimes people already think that you, have, you are you are you're stuck up. Yeah, you are stuck up. You are too known, and that is one thing I, I always get because they think that okay, hey, your address in hey, or you say you. And even last week, yeah. someone approached me and was like, oh, I mean, that's what I thought. I thought, oh, what's wrong? Mm -hmm. I, I, see, I can't I've even talk to you. What I have realized is that people would always have that assumption. Like, so how then do you? even try and move to them because already they have that kind of perception about you. 
you know, you, you, you be yourself. You be yourself. It's, it's one thing for them to see you that way. Trust me, none of them would see you up close and try to attack you with what they have thought, mm -mm. you know, behind their phones and mm -hmm. all of that. Mm -hmm. No. Sometimes you would find even someone bashing you on Twitter or on, um, yeah, on X now um, or on Instagram and they see you in and person they and they are all mellow. They are mm. odd. Yeah. So it's not really about you trying to, you know, bend the knee to suit them. Mm -hmm. It's about you just being your authentic self, but making sure that you're paying attention to the feeling or you're being empathetic to people um, as well. How, how do you I, also I, I, see, um, yeah. one of the things uh, to project a very warm personality is to be mentally present. Mm -hmm. You cannot be with me and be thinking about something else. Yeah. You see, your countenance, what I see on your face, tells me something. So sometimes it's not because it's I you are disrespecting. You are just distracted. Your thoughts are far away from where you are. Mm. And for that matter, I don't know where your thoughts are. All I see is a lady that doesn't greet. Mm. And so she, she isn't such a fine lady. Mm -hmm. She isn't so warm. She isn't so sweet. That's my experience. When I met this gentleman, he didn't say hello to me. In our office environment, wherever you go, church, wherever you go, be present. Mm -hmm. The moment you're amongst people, be with them. Mm -hmm. Acknowledge them. Let them feel worthy with your smile, with your look, with your, your body language and the things you say to them. If you're able to do that, I think 60% of the 60 problem is really? solved. Yeah. But how do you also <laughs> strike a balance? Because there are people that when you are trying to be yourself, like Joy mentioned, they think, oh, she's been overly nice. Uh, should I be worried about how she's been overly nice? Because they already think that you're not supposed to be that nice or that welcoming or that warm. Mm -hmm. So how do you balance it nicely and know that, okay, I'm not going overboard or I'm not doing it too little? Yeah, I think once you are, like Ms. Nancy said, once you're present, one, um, it means you're conscious of yourself. You're not going to overdo it or underdo it. Mm -hmm. um, I think one thing that even as personalities mm -hmm. you have over the... Um, for lack of a better word, an average Ghanaian yeah. who is not in the limelight per se mm -hmm. is that you might have a lot more confidence because of your exposure than them. Yeah. And sometimes with confidence, you know, in our cultural setting, it actually sometimes downplays our confidence when you're growing up. So mm -hmm. you might have an upper hand than mm -hmm. the average Ghanaian when it comes to that setting. So if you're in a room and you exude confidence, you have to make sure you're empowering them as well. Mm -hmm. So something like you go mm -hmm. into a room and say, oh, you look good. That alone has set the tone because you've poured out some of that confidence to her and that would be in her mind and she would flow with you as well yeah, yeah. That, so that, that's a good tip I, yeah. 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 I totally love what you yeah. just said i yeah. totally love what you just said yeah. and i support the idea of being yourself mm -hmm. like you said um because i'm considering the people with social anxiety yeah yeah there are a lot of actors I know it's who real. have social anxiety. <laughs> it's real. You know, it's, it's terrible. Yeah. And so you find them in a place, and it's not because they are rude or they are not nice people. They, you know what social anxiety is. <laughs> yeah. So they are trying. Yeah. And so they don't come across, like Anita is saying, mm -hmm. as, okay, she, he's overdoing it. I don't think he's being genuine. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Considering them, yeah. they have to be themselves. But having at the back of their mind that at least people should feel okay around so, them. So you have to live up to your brand. Mm -hmm. There are writers and actors that never grant any interview, that do not do anything social yeah. because of these skills that they lack. Mm -hmm. So if you feel that you lack the people's skills, be that actor, find ways of branding yourself on social media, stay away from the real people. world, mm -hmm. be with your family, we're fine. But so long as you're going to be in our face, you would have to find a way of being nice. <laughs> you would have to find a way of being True. pleasant. True. That is what you do. In order not to overdo it, um, engage people. Be the one asking the questions. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we become um, overwhelmed with all the attention. We feel we should hijack the conversation. Mm -hmm. This is all about me. Yeah. Let everybody know I can speak English. I can talk well. <laughs> I understand chi. I understand ga. Whatever skills or abilities that you are blessed with. It's always great when you create the ambience that you are the host. You are in charge. You are making people feel comfortable and confident. Asking them questions where they get to express themselves mm -hmm. you make them feel wonderful you make them feel worthy yeah
Let's get practical with this. Which, which popular person did you meet that made you feel so good? If you can remember, who did you meet and felt so good? Like, wow, I didn't think a person like this could make me feel Well, I think way. for me, the first, the very first person was KOD. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I met KOD. I, I, My bros. I don't remember <laughs> when, but I was, I was young. I was very young and I always idolized him. And um, I actually was working with his wife, okay. you know. And this man came from work, Radio Gold by then, and entered the shop. Yo, Darko, <laughs> I know you've been looking for Charlie. I've been looking for you too. Are, are we brothers? You are also Darko. <laughs> that, and I was, this was me. Odd. Oh, like, <laughs> like, How many years ago? <laughs> the, I, but I, I, don't, I can't remember. I can't remember. Right. But he, I remember he was... Yeah, he was on radio then, and he just came into the room, and he was just going, he was, he started a conversation, right. you know, and he had heard, of course, his wife had told him that, yeah, oh, there's okay. this gentleman who wants to meet you mm. and all of that, but, I mean, he didn't have to, right. because I was a staff, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was a staff then, but he entered, and the moment, he was, ah, oh, you're also dark, right, ah, where are you from, you might be from my... And we no. just and that started, we just hit it off from then. So, so yeah. And I'm sure you can't do no wrong in your eyes. Uh, yeah. after that. No, exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yes, I, I, it was amazing that uh, for a woman that, quote unquote, at the time was supposed to be my immediate competition because she was the known person for sex talk shows in Ghana mm. and I was the one coming up. And then she sees me and she actually sees me and acknowledges what I'm doing. And she offers that, oh, next time you need a resource person, do call me Ekuma Mama Zimbi. Ooh. Goodness. I was, she was doing what I was doing. Yeah. She was yeah. more popular. She had been in it for over 10 years. And she sees me and she acknowledges that yeah. I'm doing great work and offers to come on my show. And mm -hmm. she actually did. Wow. Wow. And for me, she's one of the greatest people. Oosh. Because you find people in the industry, you have same, almost similar content, mm -hmm. and then they feel that you are their main competition, yeah. so you cannot be friends. <laughs> yeah. This woman was there for me the whole period. Mm -hmm. And so she's one person I revere, I honor, and I celebrate. Yeah. And Kumama Mazimbi, ah. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> Don't ask me about the other wife. <laughs> <laughs> and is that you? Mine? Huh, I think this is the first time I'm telling the story. Good. So I was in 2014. Yeah. And very young, naive maybe. And uh, it was a day to the grand finale of Miss Malaika. Okay. And for some funny reason, Sarah Kodia came to um, the old GH1. Uh -huh. And I was there and then Apefa was like, oh... Uh, Sakori is around. I've gone to tell him that you are performing his song, and so he says, "Come over." I froze for a second because oh. I was like, "Okay, why? Why would he even make time?" Because he was going to sit in his car, yeah. and he had his whole entourage, and mm -hmm. he actually spends like ten minutes just listening to what I was going to do. Oh. And that was what gave me that confidence to be on that stage yeah. that night. Yeah. 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 yeah, you know, I'm not careful. I'll cry. And since then, I was like, this gentleman. There's absolutely nothing yeah. anybody can, can tell, tell me about yeah. him. Yeah. There's no yeah. because it was such a big deal Love for me. Love at first you know, experience. Mm -hmm. I loved him already yeah. as a fan, and yeah. then he spending that time with me. Oh. And guess what? This is someone they say is stuck up. But yeah. you, you, eyes, you get it. By he eyes, he he's can never be stuck up to me. So, so, so he's so himself. Yeah. The first he? impression to the other people that would call him that, it was how he, he acted when they met him for the first time. Right. He probably was not even mentally present. Yeah. It wasn't because he was being rude. Mm. It was just because they felt ignored. Mm. So, but Anita, he, she experienced him, had a conversation. Exactly. She felt worthy. And that is what we should seek, especially popular people, yeah. to make people feel whenever they encounter Absolutely. us. That's on your yeah. screen. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. 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 So, so when one, people one say, I'm that... so biased when it comes to him, they don't do the box. <laughs> exactly. like, okay. One thing that I've noticed even with our stories is mm. that it didn't take money. Yeah. None of them gave us like money yeah, or you know. something tangible. <laughs> it was just something that they Feeling. said. Feeling. God, when you, know, you so listen to go, ours, let's go, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's share you. Let's no, 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 no. One. We want his bad one. No, no. Tell uh, us yours. I, mine would be three people. Hey. Mm. Yeah, three people. But I mean, I'll just talk about Anita Erskine. Oh, um, wow. Anita Erskine, Jerry uh, Ajololo, yeah. and uh, Ajite Anan. Like, wow. it's yeah. just, they, yeah. are, they are not human beings, I yeah. have to say. No, because honestly. I met Anita. Uh, we're emceeing the same, we were emceeing the same event. Okay. Um, a friend's birthday. 
-hmm. we have a mutual friend mm -hmm. and i meet this woman that i have always admired like you know and it's like oh you're the guy I mean, come here and she just dragged me in yeah. and just and she just started and i was like what yeah she sat down with me talked life that's yeah. a neat we didn't talk the event or we yeah. talked life. life you know you're doing marriage I was like, why is this woman talking to me like she knows me from... <laughs> exactly. You know, and I mean, Jerry Ajololo saying, Ajit Anandi, it's a different conversation altogether. <laughs> so we are absolutely right. It's, yeah. it's the way they make us feel. Yeah, yeah it is. And, and if you hear somebody saying something bad about them, you probably jump to their defense. Exactly. And, and say, exactly. so you guys are right. I thought you were going to mention my name, darling. <laughs> <laughs> it was yes, I have such a beautiful relationship with Miss Nancy. Right? The first thing she saw me like, you're so handsome. I was like, oh, wow. Okay. You know, and I'm, I'm serious. And, and you're actually it's, handsome. It's, it's stuck in my mind, like, oh, yeah, yeah. When yeah. I see Miss Nancy, that's all I remember. Yeah, 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 I'm yeah. Handsome, so I have yeah. to keep myself, you know. <laughs> yeah. You see, to, to shed joy, yeah. Yeah. to give compliments, yeah. it doesn't take anything from me, yeah. but it actually makes another person's day. Mm -hmm. And as I'm say, saying those pleasant words to you, I would be smiling yeah. because it's having an effect on me. Yeah. Why should we go about being mean with our yeah. words? Thank Why are you. we not kinder to each other? Mm. Why are we not so pleasant to each other? So, hey, Anita is pretty i'm always telling anita you've got a face you you don't even need anything else <laughs> she's got the face and anita you are always dressed yes she's got it I'm and shy. Uh, when i tell her she's got one of the most loveliest eyes on television Aww. in the whole of ghana Absolutely. I mean, the whole of ghana <laughs> let's be this nice and kind to ourselves Each because other, yeah. it actually makes the world a more beautiful place Absolutely. we are building brands mm -hmm. the most important thing is the way we live people feeling yeah. in our upset. <laughs> Look at Anita, look at Anita in school. Our uh, 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 <laughs> director man, has been very, very good. Is, 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 <laughs> is admiring. Last, yeah. last, 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 last question for our viewers. Um, mm -hmm. How do you approach anybody at all in mm -hmm. a social space as you want to social network? Yeah. I have that big challenge. I don't <laughs> want, and it's not because I'm rude or I'm not nice. I'm shy. I, it's not, I'm like, not even shy. I'm, yeah, I'm shy. How do you approach anybody at all, whether it's a celebrity, whether it's an average Joe? How do you approach a person? How do you start a conversation? Mm. Well, um, so for me, it's, it's always to think, okay, two things. First, think about what you are bringing to the table. Mm. And this is not the relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Think of, and um, what you bring to the table is what you have nice. that the person might need. Mm. Do you get it? So why should we even start a conversation in the mm. first place? So if you are thinking about that, then rehearse. Mm. <laughs> I used to, I, as, a, as a young boy, I used to re rehearse in front of the mirror. I've received all the awards in my mother's bedroom. <laughs> Before all the awards from there. yeah like mm. every single award i'll stand in front of the mirror receive the award everything recite exactly what Wendy. i want to <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah and so i do that i soliloquize in my own room mm. and before i get in in person i already know what i'm going to say to you i already know what i'm going to say to you people don't really pay attention to that a lot because they feel like it's supposed to be freestyle all the time yeah. and a few people have that off the cuff they can you know start conversations and all but if you're not like that please rehearse in the room hi my name is joey i do this i do that i do that what about you start the conversation beautiful mm. yeah That's thank great. you Ms. Nancy. Yeah. hi so you need to introduce yourself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hello, I am Miss Nancy. Nice to meet you. I met you first, or I saw you first here. Acknowledge the person too. After introducing yourself, mm -hmm. let the person know where you remember them from, or if you do not know them, you are trying to know them. Yeah. We've never met before. I just thought I'd meet your acquaintance. That's it. Yeah. So if you are able to do that, that is great. Sometimes you do it non-verbally. You look at the person whilst they are talking to other people and you smile. Oh, mm. flirting a crowd. <laughs> <laughs> small flirting, right. small flirting. You know. Miss Nancy will tell us we should flirt more, right? Oh, so, so small smile. Smile. Is or you smile. Anita smiles. will have a problem yeah. because your eyes are dreamy already. <laughs> <laughs> the moment you, you know. add a smile you know, to it, it's a flirt. When I'm looking at someone, God, you're like... It's a flirt. <laughs> it's a flirt. So mm. you need uh, to, to know. Smile. Allow your body to say things yeah. to people. And then sometimes just when you're thinking about going to them, they yeah. will come to you. Mm.
Absolutely. Personal branding and social networking conversation mm -hmm. done and dusted. Thank you so much. I wish much. you could go on and on. Yeah, and thank I mean. you so much, Mr. <laughs> Nancy. But Joey, that, where can we find you quickly? Um, so you can find me on Instagram, your Taylor's Taylor, your Taylor's Taylor with a U R Taylor's Taylor dot official. Okay. Uh, my personal brand page is also Joey the brand, Joey underscore the brand on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And yeah, I'd love to you. see those on him. So no, no, absolutely. I would be I got suspecting you. and expecting it. Yes. Ms. <laughs> Nancy is my manager now. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. You're still watching the app afternoon show yeah. when we return we'll tell you what's happening in the world of entertainment and more still watching the afternoon show and just gone by king paluta i mean he's making waves i absolutely love him but it's time for sportainment sports and entertainment or enter sporty or what, or what we're starting with <laughs> entertainment today but we have here ajwa nuwala and oriku and Popo. Yeah. we're starting with entertainment mm. ajwa what is happening? Well, last week we were here to talk about Funny Face. Hmm. And just a few days after, we didn't hear too good news. Um, just over the weekend, we saw that he had been involved in an accident somewhere in Kaswa, heading towards Kakraba. Um, according to eyewitnesses, they say that he, you know, there, were, there was a, a woman with a child behind, and then she was holding another child. So he ran into them, and then two other motor, you know, motorists that were... Um, involved. So in total, there were five people that he knocked down. Um, also, some eyewitnesses say that, you know, he smelled drunk. You know, he was drunk to a certain degree. And when you watch the videos that were trending on social media, well, from the aftermath, you could see that there was a little bit of exaggeration there, where some people said, you know, he's so drunk, he's so um, something, I think two people have died and one person is dead and all that. So that was the story that was going on until DKB, you know, um, went into the police station. So uh, at 2 a.m., he was around the same place, you know, trying to see what is happening with Funny Face. And we have a video that he made um, to give updates on the situation that we had seen and, and heard on social media. So if you could take that, and then when we come back, we delve into the matter a bit more. Yeah, reporting from the Millennium City Caswa. From the time I heard Funny Face issue, I had to rush over and then, you know, look into it and see how we can help. I can organize you know, the comedians and other celebrities to get to the bottom of it. So you can see Millennium City Council. So I've, I've, I've extensively followed it tonight. It's about 2 a.m. I'm now going home. All I can say is thank to Ghana police for coming to the scene quickly, else we would have been lynched. And also, nobody's dead. Nobody's dead. Thank you. For TV yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that was his report after he made his way to the police station. But even before we speak to the lawyer, we have a lawyer on the line because okay. we want to find out the possibilities that are going to be, um, you know, come out of it. If in the first situation, that is, if anybody died, what could have happened? If somebody didn't die, what could have happened? If he was drunk, what could have happened? So we have a lawyer on standby. But even before that, I just want to pick your minds on what is happening. Like I said, a few days ago, we we're just speaking about it. Hmm. I mean, Godwin was of the view that he needs to just go out of the country for a while. Uh, you still are you still standing by Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Yeah. I stand by it. Okay. I, I think he needs a different environment. Yeah, he does. Starts his life uh, all fresh. over again. Yeah. That's are you I still? Yeah, I, I still stand by it. The fact that um, I mean things happen in life, and at some point you will pick yourself up. There's a reason why these things are happening to him. I won't be surprised if, uh, just like we saw Lord Kenya become a pastor at some mm. point. Sometimes you have to go through these things for a reason. Yeah. I mean, I strongly believe from my Christian background, that everything happens for a reason. So okay. um, Funny Face has to go through this. It's meant to happen. And he will come out stronger. Oh, so and strong. I don't think he has to move anywhere. This is but where his life is. Starting your life afresh. No, You're this is where his life problem. is. This is where he his life is. He can't throw away yeah. his career. Years of what? building well, a brand. It, I hmm. also think that it depends on, I mean, with what is happening, it's just, if he has to move, he should. No. If he has to. <laughs> He should. But we have a lawyer on the line, like I said. He is lawyer Christian Malm, and he's going to be telling us, you know, some extremities uh, or some things that could have happened in this situation. Lawyer, please, if you can hear us, uh, good afternoon. Thanks for joining us on the afternoon show. The engine bells clear the having... tower uh, as soon as the spacecraft uh, is... Okay, so I just want to find out, when you had the situation, you know, what did you make of the entire situation, even before we got to the details of, you know, how many people were involved and all that. What was your thinking like? I mean, any traffic offense that what involves any is the area yes. of... Okay. 
Okay, we still have a lawyer on the line, you know, we're just trying to fix a few things and then we'll be speaking. But like I said, we want to find out, you know, the possibilities that could come out of this case. I mean, definitely everybody, fingers crossed, we're just hoping that, you know, whatever happens, you'll be able to go through it and then come out, you know, a better person, like we're saying. And so um, we're praying for him. Honestly, we're praying for him. And then hopefully right. we're able to get the lawyer back on the line. We can take that. Okay, so our lawyer is ready. Lawyer Malm, if you can hear us. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, wonderful. So back to the first question. Um, what, what was your thinking like when you, when you first heard of the incident? Yes, I mean, just as I started off by saying, any near fatality um, is, uh, in, in, which involves a road traffic offense is, 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 is mind-worrying, is mind-boggling. And just as any ordinary citizen of the land, and especially but he's, as it involves this particular celebrity we are all concerned about, it's one it's that amount, apprehended all our minds. We are happy that nobody died as it, it contrasted the earlier reports that uh, came out from that particular incident. Okay, so now we've seen two sides of the story. I mean, we have somebody that was an eyewitness that said that, you know, somebody was killed in the process. A little girl was killed. That was the first instance. So with that first instance, and considering that he was drunk, what are the possible, you know, if there are going to be any jail terms at all, what duration are we looking at, you know, in, in that kind of situation? Okay, all right. So under the the, the Traffic Offense Act and all of, all of the most um, offenses, we have possible, possible charges that could come under um, dangerous driving. Um, we also have issues that will relate to careless and inconsiderate driving under Section 3 of the Traffic Offense Act. We also have um, driving under the influence of alcohol or drugs, and then driving when alcohol concentration is above limits. So basically, when we talk about um, dangerous driving, it deals with the fact that um, the driver um, drove below the standards expected of a driver. And in, 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 if you branch off from criminal jurisprudence and you go even into, into civil, civil jurisprudence where an action in this matter could still emanate in law of thought, um, the standard that is accosted to a driver, whether the person is even a trainee driver or not, is affixed as a standard. So even where one is learning to become um, a professional driver or an ordinary driver in the sense, that trainee driver, should he or she run into a motorist or persons or pedestrians, that person um, would be charged with the same offense because once the person is behind the vehicle, the standard is affixed to that particular person. So with this section one, that... Um, um, they could, I'm not saying um, um, that if um, prosecution or the police is minded of to um, affix charges to him and take him through the criminal um, um, corridors of law, then these are some of the these are some of the charges that's going to come up. And with respect to um, dangerous driving, where police is successful in establishing all the elements. Um, it will go through summary conviction. So just as um, the procedure normally happens, it will be arraigned before court. That if prosecution is looking at or the police CID is looking at doing, and then you see whether or not um, he's guilty. Um, we call it, they'll take his plea. And after taking his plea, um, his lawyer, who, who would be the defense lawyer, would, would move the court to grant a um, bill and where the court is minded to grant a bill and especially because of Fable versus Attorney General, all cases are billable unless the court has a reasonable justification to remand the person. Um, bill will be granted him and thereafter um, the prosecution would have to uh, finish the defense with um, their disclosures in respect of the, the charges that they have brought, but they are charged and witness statements and all of that. Okay. And indeed, it would include 
include um, some of these, but these will be notable um, charges that will be brought against them. Okay. Now, where no bodily injury or minor bodily injury occurs, um, where his sentence, the liability is 100 units to 200 units. Mm -hmm. And that's about um, 12 cities thereabouts. Okay. That's the penalty okay. unit. So okay. if you multiply, it will be between the range of that. Right. Now, where there is bodily injury or aggravated nature occurred with persons that he ran into, then it is also going to range between 250 to 500 units. Now, okay. where... Right. In respect of the first one, where there the, the would be bodily injuries or minor injuries, it's either that penalty needs of 100 to 200 or nine months imprisonment or both. And then the second part, it ranges um, between 12 months to two years. Okay, now, sure. where okay. death occurred, where death occurred, um, is likely to spend not, not less than three years. But fortunately for us, that did not happen. That did not happen. And okay. In the spirit of in the spirit of all of these things, where the court summarily tries him on this, then where the persons happen to be injured after medical assessments had been done and the prosecution had established the degree of injuries and all of that, the mm. um, order for compensation would also be made um, by the court, given the fact that prosecution have established a successful case against him. him okay. Now, the other part of section... Lawyer Christian. Three, which deals with Lawyer Christian. Yes. yes, so unfortunately, yes. we don't have a lot of time on our hands, but we'll definitely visit the conversation again because we need to full, uh, fully flesh out the possibilities of this particular situation. But unfortunately, this is all the time will allow us on the show. Thank you so much for joining us on the afternoon show. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. This Ooh. is what we have. I mean, we've, we've heard something small. 200 units and 250 units. Yes, there's a lot of cities. units. There's yeah. a lot of units. And so, yeah, it's so um, unfortunate. Yeah, that's where we stand. Like we said, nothing is confirmed yet. Yeah. So everything, you know, is an allegation. So hopefully we can hear something from the team. We can see some official statements being made. And then we know what, what is going to happen mm. to our funny face. Anyways, I know you have another bad news. Yes, unfortunately, you know, the passing. Last week I was here to say that I don't want to talk about the passing of anybody in the industry again. But unfortunately in Nigeria, you know, a very prominent actor, somebody that we I mean we talk about Mr. Ibu, we talk about him, we talk about Sam Lokoife. All these people are people that, you know, made us happy when we were children. And so it's quite unfortunate to see that um he passed. He succumbed to a disease and then unfortunately he died at the age of sixty one. And so May his soul rest in perfect peace. Pepe. Yeah. Mm. I think I remember him from that movie. I was very young. Pepe. I don't yeah. know if you guys remember it. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> um, a real quick for please. Yeah. What's happening in sports? It looks like today... Things yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm the bearer of good news. Yeah. 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 Thank God. <laughs> please. So I'm here to tell you that the African Games is over. But that, that's is that good, good news. news? Oh, it's good news. <laughs> because really it ended good. well. Oh, it really ended well. <laughs> no, it ended well. That's um, the good news. I thought we were coming to say that they, they want to add some one week. I thought they want to come up with one week. <laughs> it ended well from an organization point of view. The closing ceremony, just as the opening ceremony, was very colorful. Uh, it was very beautiful, very packed stadium that people were being turned away uh, because it was full to capacity. Mm. And so the closing ceremony was just basically all the 50 plus nations who participated in the games to give them a chance to say goodbye and also to see some artists like Stone Boy, Riala and the rest. And so it was very colorful. Uh, if, if you looked in your sky around 6, 7 p.m., you would have seen some very uh, interesting fireworks, different colors in the sky. And so I think that signaled the end of the competition. From a Ghanaian perspective, it was very good because the contingent won the most medals that we've ever seen at an African Games edition. Uh, we got 68 medals, uh, 41 of which came from arm wrestling. And so we can just take a, a look at the breakdown of that uh, for, for Team Ghana. Um, it was very impressive given that after the first week or so, Ghana had just five medals. Mm -hmm. Uh, but to finish in the top six uh, with 60 plus medals, almost 70, it just shows that there is potential because you still cannot ignore some of these fundamental issues that uh, we had 
the athletes race uh, but even amidst all of that uh, as i said i'm wrestling about 41 boxing athletics came in second third with seven and six there was football that won two out of two both of them being gold weightlifting with three hockey with two taekwondo with three and then swimming with two volleyball uh, with one and so we've just been you know weighing the whole perspective it's sort of been divided into two as to what the thoughts have been for the african game some feel the beginning was um, a bit rough with how things looked like, but later settled. So we spoke to some African journalists who made a trip to Ghana to find out how the experience was, you know, covering a tournament in Ghana. This is not my first time in Ghana. And, um, we've, you know, we're like friends. We are friends. We are like family brothers. And uh, it, apart from the eats, I think everything has been excellent. Um, looking for local food, I'll be able to get a place where I'll be eating my eba and you see semo and uh, vegetable and stuff like that. I think so far so good. You people are very kind to start off with, so I'm having a good time. And more, more, more importantly, the games well organized. The athletes are doing their best. I think we are all here for them, and I'm I'm sure they are quite happy to see what what you guys have put down. So thank you so much so far. Most of the people we met have been very friendly and helpful. And I think Accra is quite a calm city. You know, there's, there's traffic though, but like I think it's quite calm and very help. people have been very helpful and kind and nice. So it's been interesting also, moving from one competition venue to the other. I am quite impressed. I could see that facilities were put in place for this. But what I didn't really like was like in terms of the media, I feel like not much attention was paid to things that have to do with the media movement. So like, I know the security people are doing their jobs, but sometimes it looks like they're overzealous. You know, there's a lot of limitation for movement and so on and so forth. So for me, that has been my biggest grouse. But I think they've done fantastic by hosting this game. So, you know, those were some perspectives of some journalists who made the trip to Ghana. Surprisingly, everyone is happy. Yeah. yeah. Surprisingly. Nice yeah, surprisingly. You're not expecting them to be happy. <laughs> you know, I, I thought the beginning, how, you know, we reported some started, of these yeah. stuff would have mm -hmm. affected. But, you know, as the saying goes, uh, it's usually about how you end, not how you start. And so mm. maybe they did get it right with that. I, I thought the athletics, boxing, football was really brilliant. It was almost faultless and kudos to the ministry and all the federations, uh, the LOC especially, the volunteers, everyone who contributed to making this end well. I wouldn't call it a success, but I'll just use the term end well. No, hopefully next time we do better. Um, <laughs> but let's move to uh, Ghana football mm. okay. because it, uh, it's been a difficult period for Asante Kotoko fans. Kotoko lost again this weekend. Mm. Oh, they were playing? Yes, and so they played against Nations FC at home. Mm -hmm. A lot of people expected them to win and put an end to a bad run now. It's their fourth defeat on the bounce. And it's the first time in a very, very, very long time, I think about 14 years, that we're seeing Kumasi Asante Kotoko lose four straight league games. And so they've lost four, first time in 14 years. And as a result, they sit ninth on the league table. At this point, they are 10 points away from the top of the table. So things are not looking good at all for um, Asante Kotoko. You can look at the table there. They sit 932 points, 10 away from Samatex, who are top of the table. Interestingly, if you look at the other half of the table, Kotoko are actually closer to the bottom three uh, because it's just six points away from the relegation for, for Kotoko. And it's, it's a bit worrying considering the, how the team is playing. They, they just don't seem to have the right formula at the moment. And uh, there have been calls for Pospa Nateogum to, to be sacked, uh, which, which is surprising considering that he won the league in his first things. But things just don't seem to be going well at the moment. And in the game against Nations over the weekend, uh, we saw the fans, some of the officials take out their frustrations on the referee. Mm -hmm. where they tried to attack the match day referee for some of the decisions that were made. And what, what we do know right now is that the Ghana Football Association has charged Asante Kotoko again <laughs> because last week when they faced Adriana, they were charged because their coach didn't comply with the rules when you were showed the red card and they've been charged again. So it just speaks of how they've been indisciplined as a club. 
and it looks as if fundamentally yeah. something is wrong yeah. uh, with, with the Sante Kotoko. Uh, but some of their fans have also been sharing their thoughts. Uh, they've not been too happy. Some of them too think that it's just a case of referees. Others do think that they need a striker. And so we're in Kumar City here, uh, what other people had to say when it comes to Asante Kotoko. It's a combination of factors. Uh, the technical side has got their own problems. On our part, our supporters, we've also not done the best in terms of coming to the stadium to support the team. Today was a little bit better than the previous matches, but it is still low. Looking at the strength of our supporters, and then I think that the, 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 the chunk of the blame should go to the players because they are on the field. And I, I don't see the agency in them to catching up with those on top. Uh, of course, officiating, there's, there, there's, there's, there, there's still more room for improvement. But I wouldn't attribute our loss today to the, the, the referees. They might have contributed to our loss by 20%. But I think on the day, our boys let, let us down. I didn't see the agency in them to win the match. We patch our boy and the boy and the boy and my idea, or my other mobile boy, or mobile boy, Cassa. Na, 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 I cut your bush go na my go na the bush go on the board, my twatrimon, and I said, We bought it there, I had the body there, what the boys and I had here. What am I the mobile boy, mobile boy, pa, mobile boy, pa, born my mobile boy. I cut your board, but twatrimon, born my. Kotoko, I know my bobo pa, ene. Kan kan baba ya, ene wabo bo, ene. Na mission, ba we filo eli ble oditia. Matue, we filo eli ble. Ba kotoko ma bobo dia wase mika. Eli bad. Ref is when I say Ghana bo. Mini madia, jaje. Kotoko daya teams. No no no, kwati nyashi. Kwati nyashi. Kwati kambi. Kwati kambi. Ref is the bo dia wa. Of my main casa. Your boys know how we can perform nowadays. Anna will defeat you any day. I see a few nations like us, you show match with Naka, you have to go right off for Nimu. But you are not a man, you are not a man, and your prayers in the Black Hawk are a injury prayer of Nai, a mobile born for national and Mokwala New York, and a Sarah Sunni War. If I defeat Nidia, I see any of us here in a match with. I mean, you can't tell me anything. Ghanaians, we love our football. <laughs> yeah. the, the emotions are yeah. still there. Yeah. Very, this can, yeah. very, very, this can never happen in House of Folk. It <laughs> can never happen in House of Folk. <laughs> but I mean, yeah. Oriku, thank you so much yeah. for bringing us sports. Ajwa, thank you for entertainment. And uh, this is our show for today. It's been a good one on personal branding. Absolutely. Uh, I see the personal social networking. brand happening. Yeah. The branding is branding. It's a flat hair for me. So. <laughs> flat hair. Yeah. That's a brand. But of course, we've seen your comments as well on our conversation. I mean, um, Cynthia, I say in beautiful insights um, on personal branding. And also there's a comment where uh, most of you are saying that you were learning a lot from uh, Joey and then Miss Nancy uh, when it came to the personal branding conversation and styling. And so uh, this is where we say bye-bye. And uh, big thank you going out to Ajwaya Bois Clothing for my skirt. Thank you, Ajwaya Bois, and to Savida Boyri Kinte for my Kinte skirt. as well. My skirt. Skirt, skirt, skirt. skirt is skirting. Skirt. Yeah. Skirt, skirt. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's go. All right, guys. Thank you. I mean, tomorrow we're discussing fasting. And it's fasting. All types of fasting. Intermittent fasting, mm -hmm. religious fasting, all kinds of fasting and its benefits. So don't yeah. miss out. It's good for the people who want to lose weight. Yeah. Fasting. 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 We'll see you we tomorrow. are fasting from it's today okay. to Let's tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. See you guys tomorrow.